Hi everyone, welcome back and to another In The Wardrobe vlog. And today we are talking my everyday winter coats and jackets. All my favourites that I've been collating over the years, lots of which are from the high street, so nice and affordable. A couple I blew the budget on and don't regret. And one that I loved so much, I've bought exactly the same coat again. So let's begin. Okie dokie, where do we start with these coats and jackets? What I do need to do as we go along is a little bit of a declutter and reorganise of this rail, because as you can see, I've got a few spring summer jackets in there as well. So I'm going to move those over to this rail to be put up into the attic and just make this a little bit more cleaner and organised of the winter coats and jackets that I'm actually using. So let's start with my blow the budget, I think. Blow the budget, absolutely gorgeous shirling jacket, which I got about a month and a half ago now. I love it, which I should for the price tag. And it's definitely a forever jacket for my own wardrobe. So obviously it's made from shirling, so it's super, super warm and delightfully so I must admit I wore it in London um, on a particularly freezing day I'm sure it felt like it was about minus five the other week and this jacket very much kept me warm and toasty actually that same day when I wore this jacket in London and it was really really cold within I don't know about half an hour of wearing it for the very first time that I'd worn it out and Walter had been eating a hot dog he'd got ketchup fingers and he literally used me like a napkin all the way down my arm in my brand new jacket. And if you can see, it's got a lovely grease mark down the arm now. So if anyone's got any bright ideas of how to get that out, I've kind of been putting it off, waiting for the perfect suggestion. So please do let me know in the comments if you have a good plan of how to get rid of it. So let's go now to quite a classic looking coat with my long gray herringbone one that I got from weekday. So nice and affordable. Actually, they kind of sit at that mid range of the high street. And I think if you're looking to add a coat into your own wardrobe I would focus on getting those very timeless looking lapels because you know in five ten years time that's not going to date at all and some of the ones that I've been seeing across the high street that have tried to do something a little bit different which I'm not knocking it can look cool on certain coats but I do worry about the longevity of that piece so I think if it's an investment piece for you and you're just going to buy one coat this year I would go for those classic elements of tailoring now this one is actually very oversized which I'll show you in a minute and I'll try it on but for me personally that's how I like to wear it. If however you would prefer this a little bit more fitted I would advise with this particular coat and the new style that they've got on their website perhaps think about sizing down so it's a little bit more fitted. Now we have got a couple of springy things in here that need to go into the attic because sadly I don't think I'll be using them for a little while so I've got my beautiful navy trench coat there love that definitely not going to be wearing it at the moment though because it's too cold and then my wheel jacket which I've got in the car kit and I've got in the dark indigo denim as well. Brilliant jacket, love that. Wore it all the way through spring, summer, but obviously a wee bit cold for now. Uh, so I'll put those there. Sorry, really random swerve, but Abby was just asking me about... In fact, I'll show you, hold on. So <laughs> I've wanted, it's really random. I really wanted to perm my hair recently. And I spoke to my hairdresser and I was saying, what do you think if I perm my hair? And she's like, Jessica, your hair will just fall out because it's too colored, too much bleach in there. It will just really, really damage it. So I had the idea to buy myself what they call a chopstick curler. I don't know if you can see, it's actually, it's really weird. It's like a, a rectangle shape. It's kind of got flat edges, which apparently makes your hair curlier, but also makes it last for longer being on this rectangle. Anyway, point being, it really did make my hair look like I'd had a perm. And at the same time as I did this on Sunday, my new glasses just arrived. So if you, you kind of got to imagine now, but I had wild, like proper perm style hair. And then I tried on my new glasses which I might add, I really like. However, I think they might be a little bit of a Marmite look. Possibly give you all a good giggle for Christmas time. They are my reading glasses. What do you think? I know, actually, you're probably all laughing now. Abby laughed this morning when I tried them on. And David, as you can imagine, I went up, I got my hair all in a big perm. I was like, oh, what do you think? My glasses have just arrived. And he was like, what have you done? What have you done to your hair? Walter said I should get my money back on the glasses. And my friend said that I looked like an eccentric lady. Possibly a little bit eccentric, but I think I was kind of overexcited that I could choose some glasses for the first time. So I thought, you know what, just go bold or go home. That was my thought process. Are you with Walter and I should send them back and get my money back? Or are you with me and they're so quirky, they're actually kind of cool? Do let me know which camp you're in. <laughs> 
I liked them. Don't know if there was a moral to that story about the perm, but just the fact that you could try it out yourself if you want really curly hair. Anyway, stop deviating, Jessica. Uh, another spring type jacket, again, a very much forever one is the suede biker jacket. Um, lovely color in the brown there. Um, and it's a shame I can't really wear that in winter. I did size up to the 40 in that one, but I can't quite make it work with uh, a jumper underneath. So that one needs to go in the attic until March when it's going to get lovely and warm. Positive thinking. I think I need to pop this one on Vinted because it's actually not getting enough wear in my wardrobe. Um, it's a beautiful tailored jacket with that faux leather trim coming down the lapel. I really like it. There is nothing about it that I don't like. Uh, perhaps actually, one small point, I would have preferred it to be longer, almost down to my ankle kind of length. But it's a little bit surplus to requirements because I've got my long black coat now that I just invested in from Mango. So I think I'll stick that one on Vinted. Let's put that in a Vinted pile. I haven't actually got my long black coat with me on the rail at the moment. That's definitely staying in my uh, winter wardrobe. I went to an event with lots of creators and I've by accidentally picked up another creator's long black coat and worn hers home and she's got mine. So we need to swap. But yes, that one's coming back into my wardrobe. Um, my biker jacket, um, a little bit like the brown suede one, that probably doesn't really need a space in my winter wardrobe. Uh, this one is vintage. This was my mum's um, back from the 70s, but I'm not gonna put it in the attic because I'm a bit precious about keeping that one nice. So although I probably won't be wearing it at the moment, it definitely can have a spot on my rail. This is more of a... Oh, it's, this is looking fluffy. This needs a little D bobble on it. Actually, that was one of my Christmas Prezi ideas for David because I'm very, very spoiled with this job and get sent lovely clothes and makeup and skincare. So I said, do you know what I'd really like? I want a couple of those two pound uh, rollers. Uh, is it like a lint roller that you can buy in H&M? That's what I want for Christmas, to D bobble all of my clothes. So I've spoken about this one before. It's somewhere between a jacket and a coat. It's made from wool and it's quite thick and it feels a little bit more heavyweight. So this definitely feels appropriate for winter time. And equally, I've sized up, I think, to the 40 in this so that I can wear lots of my knitwear underneath it as well. I just love it, to be honest. It's very similar to the Michelle blazer jacket that I've got with the gold buttons, but this is in more of a heavier wool. So very much appropriate for winter. And I do particularly like styling this one when I'm trying to create those slightly Parisian looking outfits, I suppose. That's when it really comes into its own. As you'd imagine, it will as it's from Suzanne. So is everyone organized with their Christmas shopping? I think this video is going to go out just before uh, Christmas, so a few days before, when I'll no doubt that day be in a blind panic that there's a million things I've forgotten to buy and doing that last minute dash of shopping. As it stands as a, sorry, this is the coat. I'll stop waffling. This is the coat. Uh, as it stands at the moment, I managed to do a little bit of Christmas shopping yesterday, which kind of felt good to finally buy something because I was getting really stressed as I'm a bit last minute this year. Albert and Fred, who are 18 and 17, I'm finding really difficult to buy for because, you know, it's teenage mode and their tastes have changed and their Christmas presents are getting more and more expensive. So Walter's kind of easy to buy for. He's still very much in kind of toy gaming mode. So any ideas on teenagers or anything good you found along the way, do let me know. Let's go with something super practical now. And I know that people have a bit of a love-hate relationship with these, but I'm definitely in the love camp because they keep me so, so very warm. And that would be a giant puffer coat. I totally see the value in having a really good puffer coat in my wardrobe because I don't like the cold very much and it's just practical so when I'm you know running out the door and doing the school run this is often what I'll stick on and on top of that I must say having one in a lovely light camel color does feel a little bit more chic than normal I've got one actually that I've had for years just in the kitchen again a bit of a throw on it's a long black one that I got from Everlane that stayed in my wardrobe for the last five years and probably will do for another five now personally I would say if you want something a little bit more timeless and a bit more elegant or as elegant as you can go in a puffer jacket I would avoid the prints and those big sort of geometric designs that we've seen a couple of times on the high street they're just a bit too busy and with the puffer shape it can look a little bit odd I like 
like going for something in one of my favorite neutral tones or just go with classic black. That way it's going to really last in your own wardrobe. Very difficult to find non-polyester, obviously, because that's the nature of the fabric with waterproof, but I would make sure you've got down with the puffer section uh, just to keep you super toasty and warm, really. Uh, right, more spring, summer denim jackets. <laughs> it looks like I've had a bit of a thing for denim jackets here and uh boho looking belt. I've had that one for years actually, probably about 20 years. That was a great one actually, if anyone's looking for a denim jacket. I know it's the wrong season, but you know, this was from New Look and I have a feeling it was from the men's section in New Look which just gives you that real perfectly oversized kind of vibe. And then we've got a lovely trench coat is not for now. Hold on. Let me just declutter a little bit of this because we've got a few too many spring summer things going on. Um, and a little bit of an excess on the uh, denim jacket situation. Yeah, let's just put that on there. Haven't got a problem with buying denim jackets. Right, cropped coat. Now you might have seen this one last weekend. Actually, this came from a lovely brand called Goelia. And this one is a wool blend cropped coat with very tiny hint of cashmere. So really, really lovely and soft, beautiful quality. Really impressed with that brand. And what I love particularly, aside from the crop shape, which isn't something I really had in my wardrobe. I just love the colour. It's just that deep camel shade that I seem to really warm to, as you can probably tell, but I didn't have such a dark one on my rail. So that really fills a gap nicely and I will no doubt be able to layer lots of big chunky knits underneath that one too, which is very handy. So onto this lovely jacket here. This is a pure cashmere light camel coat that I absolutely love. You might have seen in one of my videos I did recently that I just got this back down again for winter. A total classic piece that I will no doubt have forever and it's a slightly different length to the other winter coats and jackets that I've already got in my wardrobe so it definitely feels like it fills a gap um, in a really beautiful way. Let me try that on quickly and show you. The lovely thing about this one actually is because it's been made so beautifully from that pure cashmere is that it actually feels quite lightweight uh, to wear so it doesn't feel too bulky but it's really giving you that warmth you need from when it's freezing outside which I very much appreciate. I'm going on my tiptoes here but you can see it's kind of sitting mid thigh so something a little bit different for me still quite oversized which is what I tend to warm to it feels really elegant but in that kind of understated luxe kind of way so I really love that one okie dokie what have we got so you can go that side so I actually really enjoy filming these in the wardrobe vlogs because not only is it lovely to have a good old chit chat and talk you through the wardrobe and I think and I hope from the comments before you quite enjoy having a, a look behind the scenes as such as well but actually on top of that it does sort of encourage me to do a bit of a declutter, organize myself, put things away in the attic, tidy up my messy room. It's quite therapeutic. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So hopefully you enjoy them because I'm going to keep doing them. Let's have a bit of olive. This is another beautiful coat, but this time in that deep olive tone. Now this one was kindly sent to me from Jenny Kane, which as some of you will know is a brand that I work with an awful lot on my channel. Absolutely love her style with virtually everything that she sells and actually kind of holding out for one day her being able to ship the furniture um, and interiors worldwide as well. So I don't know if you've seen their interiors but they are stunning. I just want to live in one of her furniture adverts. <laughs> anyway, sorry, coat. So the coat is beautifully made, beautiful quality of cashmere that they use and again tone wise it works really nicely with all the different brands that I tend to have in my wardrobe and it just adds a bit more depth in there which is probably what I was missing really amongst this palette of brands that I've got on my rail. So I seem to use this one an awful lot and it keeps me very toasty at the same time. And I think there's a bit of a running theme with my winter coats and jackets that I seem to have a lot of in my own wardrobe and that would be that they're all quite oversized or wider shapes. I don't really have an awful lot that's fitted or certainly the items that were a bit more fitted are the ones that I want to put onto Vinted. And I think my main reasoning for that is down to versatility really. I can wear them in lots of different ways because I can get something quite thick and bulky underneath and keep me warm and toasty but equally that will work just as nicely if I'm wearing something quite fitted or going out for the evening and I'm just wearing a, a silk blouse or something. And in general for those everyday kind of outfit ideas throughout winter I do love a long wool coat. That's probably quite a go-to kind of style for me. And in fact, actually, that brings me to my long wool coat that I have worn 
so many times and actually been a little bit too carefree with it to the point that it's looking a bit disheveled. So along with my puffer coats, this is probably my most worn winter coat that I've got on my rail. It feels a little bit flippant, but I tend to use this one almost as just a throw on. Need a coat, quick throw on that. Need to make an outfit look better, quick throw on the camel coat. But so much so, and probably being a little bit too heavy handed with it, that I think it's looking a little bit worn and tired now. So this is the one that I was waffling in the beginning about that I've actually decided to invest in another version almost the same as this one and my plan is to keep that one for best keep it looking really polished and beautifully tailored and continue to use this one as that everyday coat that I just throw on now the one that I've gone for is the same style the same shape but it is slightly darker it's not arrived yet I have a feeling it's somewhere between these two tones here. So again, it's about finding those shapes that you know are 100% your own personal style. And if you know you're going to wear it again and again and again in a David shopping kind of way, why wouldn't you want to invest in that in another color? Because you're obviously going to get your cost per wear out of it. So very excited for that one to arrive. I shall show you probably now as this will be the last video before we break up for Christmas. Um, I'll have to show you that one in the new year. Another spring summer coat here with my trench coat. That is exactly the same as the navy. Proof is in the pudding. I've gone for two different colorways in that. And I'd actually quite like to add the khaki into my wardrobe too, but I will save my pennies for that one. And then an accru denim jacket there as well. I don't think I need all these denim jackets. That's crazy. I'm going to stick that one on Vinted. That is one that I got from Gap a few years ago. So I've got the dark blue, I've got the light blue, I've got a crew, and I think this one is surplus to requirements. So I'm gonna pop that on Vinted. Now this was a super affordable faux suede jacket that I got from River Island. I am kind of loath to put that into the attic at the moment because it still really works with some chunky knits that I've got and it's just a really nice shape. I'll try it on actually so I can explain what I'm on about um, but it was really really affordable. I love the feel of the faux suede. It feels really soft. Love the colour obviously because I'm obsessed with brown but if you imagine that with a big chunky roll neck it will still absolutely work. So I might try that on a really cold day and see if I've got enough warmth for that at the moment or if it kind of needs to wait till sort of March time. But I definitely recommend having a look at their coats actually, because if that's sort of your price point, I actually thought they had some really great options in their collection at the moment. So definitely worth a look. So another surplus to requirements, but a really lovely trench coat actually would be this one that was very kindly sent to me from a brand called Align. But really this is not something I need two of because I've got my classic trench coat there. And two, I don't really need it at the moment either because it's 100% cotton, it's more spring appropriate. So begrudgingly, I think I should really either donate or sell that on Vinted because I don't need to. It's very nice to have two, but I don't think I need to. And this coat, I've been sort of bringing this one um, back on my rail for the last few seasons. And if I listen to my own advice, it's just sat there and not really got worn. So it's time to donate or sell. I've sort of been reluctant to do that because I really like it. It's from Zara Basic actually. Uh, faux suede again, I think I really like that fabric. It feels nice against my skin, but it's not thick enough for winter. I don't seem to reach for it in spring. I love the shape, love the style. In fact, if anybody wants it and I will add, unfortunately, here, if you're in the UK, so it's easy for me to post it to you. Let me know in the comments and I'll just send you the coat because it's a lovely coat, but it just needs a new home where it's going to get lots of wear and have a new lease of life. What have we got? Oh, and actually, really, this one, this I'm keeping, and I know this is ridiculous, but I'm keeping this on my rail kind of sentimental reasons because it reminds me of my mum. I think she borrowed it or it was hers. I can't really remember the story if it was hers or I borrowed it or she borrowed it from me, but it reminds me of her and I don't really really wear it. I seem to be wearing this next one as my lighter coat and not really wearing it, but I haven't got the heart to give it away or sell it. So it's staying. I don't care. <laughs> I'm cluttering, but it's sentimental value cluttering. So I'll allow myself that. And then the final winter coat that I have on my rail is this beautiful cashmere and wool blend one. This came from a brand, another independent brand actually called uh, The Curated. Lots of you I know have already heard about this brand, but if you haven't, they are definitely worth a look. They make some really beautiful pieces. The one thing I did when I bought this particular coat was 
made sure that I sized up twice. I think I did a little bit of research on them and asked a few friends who'd shopped with them before. And the one comment that I kept hearing again and again was that the coats were coming up a little bit on the small side. So if you, like me, like something a little bit bigger and a little bit slouchy, but an elegant kind of slouchy, I would advise sizing up a couple of times. And quality wise, as you can see, it barely looks like I've worn it. And actually I have worn it an awful lot. It's not really bubbling. The yarn looks perfect. So sign of a really high quality piece, I suppose. And that is just about it. A very timeless yet everyday collection of my winter coats and jackets that I will be keeping in my wardrobe, both for 2023, but also as we go into 2024. And I have actually decluttered quite a few there. What have we got? Two, four, six, eight, nine jackets or coats that I've managed to put away for spring and four or five that I'm going to either donate or sell. So that does feel like a productive declutter, if I do say so myself. So all that's left for me to say is I really hope all of you have an absolutely wonderful Christmas with all your loved ones. Eat, drink and be very, very merry. As I mentioned before, I am going to take a couple of weeks off to be with my boys and have some lovely family time over Christmas, but I'm very much looking forward to catching up with you all again in 2024. And also just one more quick thing, I really wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you for all your amazing support this year. I really, really appreciate it. I wouldn't be able to do this as a job if it wasn't for you. So I just hope you know how very, very grateful I am. It's always an absolute pleasure chit-chatting with you all in the comments section and getting to know lots of you. And just the idea really that we've managed to together create such a really, really warm and welcoming and supportive community of just like-minded women all around the world. That does feel really, really special to me. So thank you honestly for being part of that. I'm going to go do some Christmas shopping and maybe perm my hair with my new curler. Don't forget to let me know what you think to my lovely glasses and I will see you in the new year. Take care everyone.